Hey folks, welcome to Fireflies Follies. I hope that you enjoy the video today. If you do, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out a lot. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. Now, before we get started, I need to give a disclaimer. This is not an approved canning recipe. This goes against many, many, many of the rules for canning that are set, a, set out by the USDA and the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I have done the research. I am comfortable canning this for myself. This is not an instructional video. This video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm simply showing you how I do it in my kitchen. I strongly recommend that you do the research and do what works for you in your kitchen. Now, all that being said, I am canning burritos in a jar. It goes against all the rules. I am going to be layering my ingredients and then topping it up with liquids and it's not pretty on the shelf. This is not a pretty jar of food, but it is delicious. And if you've ever opened a burrito, the inside of a burrito is not pretty. So I'm going to layer all of my ingredients. What I have done, because I'm going to set this out of the way for a minute, I have browned and drained a pound of ground beef, a little over, I think it was about a pound and a half. I have sanitized my jars, they've been through the dishwasher, and they're at room temperature, my canner is at room temperature, everything is at room temperature, um, or cold in the case of the vegetables, and I've checked my canner, the gasket and the vent and the lock are all in good working order. It's got the proper amount of water in it, but it's just sitting there on the burner, I haven't turned it on yet. So we are going to layer our ingredients, we're going to start with a quarter cup of beans. These are dry, uncooked, unsoaked beans. And y'all, just a little tip for you. I small batch can a lot. And when I get my beans and bring them home, I wash, I, I don't wash them. I look through them, make sure there are none of those little pebbles in them, which nobody wants to bite down on one of those. And I put them in a jar and I put them in my cabinet. And when I'm canning, if I don't have enough to fill my canner, if I'm canning meat, beans can at the same time. So I just add a jar or two of beans. That's a half cup of dry beans, level half cup, not heaping half cup of dry beans to a pint or a cup of dry beans to a quart and fill it with the broth of your choosing. You can toss in some meat if you want, add a little salt, and it goes in with your meat, fills your canner, and you don't have empty space. So I'm going to start with a half cup, and this is not a heaping half cup. This is just a half cup of beans in each jar. I said half cup. This is a quarter cup of beans in each jar. I'm doing pints today, not quarts. So that's a quarter cup of dry beans in each jar. To that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of rice. This is just rice. And again, this is not a heaping spoon. See if I can't make this a little easier on myself in trying to dig to the bottom of the bag. Now, those two ingredients, the beans and the rice, it's very important that you measure those because they're going to swell and you don't want this to overswell your jar. So it is important that you measure those. Now, to this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of chopped bell pepper and two tablespoons of onion. If you don't like bell pepper, leave it out. If you don't like onion, leave it out. I am actually going to add one heaping tablespoon just because it's easier to measure. And we're going to call that two tablespoons. Now, I don't like green bell peppers. 
can measure that one very well. But I do like red, yellow, and orange. So that's usually what I get. And again, I'm not looking for exact on these. I just want to make sure that there's a little bit in there. And y'all try measuring a tablespoon full of chopped peppers. It's not easy. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing with the onions. Get a few things out of the way, but these kind of in the middle. And again, these two ingredients aren't critical. Now, I'm using pinto beans. If you would rather have black beans, you can absolutely use those. If you'd rather have red beans, use the dry beans of your choice. Use what you like. And I use jasmine rice because that's what I have available today. Okay, now, we're going to add a half a cup of ground beef to each of these. And again, this is ground beef that I just browned and drained. going to add two tablespoons of Rotel. Um, if you can your own, that's great. If not, just go buy some diced, green tomato, diced tomatoes and green chilies in the store, whether it's the Rotel brand or whatever it is you prefer. Again, it's your food. Make it to suit you. Two tablespoons. Now to this we're going to add half a tablespoon, because I'm doing pints, we're going to add half a tablespoon of taco seasoning. So that's a teaspoon and a half. I'm going to add a slightly rounded teaspoon. And you can use whatever taco seasoning you like. I make this taco seasoning. This is my own blend. But you can use the store brand. You can use Ortega. You can use the Taco Bell version. Doesn't matter what brand you use. You just need some taco seasoning in it. Now the recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon of salt. I am not adding salt. But a quarter teaspoon of canning or kosher salt is all that you need. And now we're going to fill these to, we're going to fill them with beef broth to a one inch headspace and we're going to debubble them. little bowl of vinegar and my piece of paper towel and I'm going to clean the rims. All right, and because we are pressure canning we don't have to heat our lids. So lids on. Fans on fingertip tight. So I'm going to get these in the canner and I'm going to bring it up to steam. I'm going to let it vent for 
10 full minutes. Once it has vented for 10 minutes, I'll put my weight on. I will bring it up to pressure, and for me that's 10 pounds. Once it comes up to pressure, I will let it run for 75 minutes, and then I will shut it off and let it come down off of pressure naturally, and once we're there, I will bring you back. Okay, I brought my pressure up to a full steam, and I vented for 10 minutes, and then I brought it up to pressure, and I let it process for 75 minutes. Once the time was up, I shut the heat off, and I let it come down off pressure naturally, and I set the jar aside, the lid ajar for about five or ten minutes and then I took the lid off and they've been sitting for about five minutes heard a couple of them seal so let's get them out and take a look now once again this is not meant to be pretty this is meant to be a practical meal in a jar focus so that you can see it. So you can see the layer of beans, the layer of rice, the ground beef, the vegetables, the rotel that we put in. And again when I'm ready to, to eat these I will just open it up, dump it in a pan or a bowl, heat it up and put it inside a tortilla, top it with my favorite toppings and I have a meal that's ready to eat. I really hope that you enjoyed the video today. If you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out a lot. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. If you hit the notification bell, YouTube will notify you when I upload a new video based on your settings. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a great day.